Anyone want to play rock, paper, scissors while we wait? You're on, Maria. Come on. Okay, ready? On shoot, okay? A two. Okay. On shoot. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. <laughs> two out of three? Okay, ready? Yep. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. Okay. Those are a draw. Third. Yep. Oh, sorry. Rock, oh. paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. Yes. <laughs> we also have a poll that we can share with everyone. Let's do a couple um, of those. Yeah. Uh, let's first do did that one this morning. Let's do a serious one first. It says that hosts and panelists cannot vote. Oh, I don't know if I can change that on my end. You can verbally say what you would do. <laughs> For those of you who put other, why don't you type out what, uh, why you picked it in the chat. <laughs> International relations with school, okay. It's a good thing we have that emphasis here. Yes, we do have international business. I appreciate the honesty. All right. So it seems like most of you wanted a career in the business field. Very intuitive, yeah. And best with your personal interests, all right. Sounds good. And then let's do another quick poll before we get started. This is a personal fave because I love superheroes. I'm going to vote out loud. I'm going to say Iron Man because I can't vote in the poll. <laughs> what about the rest of the panel? Who's your pick? My pick's Batman. Batman. Iron Man. I'd say it's a draw. They have enough money to, to draw it out. All right. Yeah, so most of our participants said Iron Man. And I think I'd have to agree. Just from what we've seen, it seemed like he has more firepower, but that's just me. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, and first we're going to meet the peer advisors, which are some of our, some of the lovely people we have here. If you have any questions, um, instead of using the raise your hand function, I recommend using the Q and A function at the bottom. It's just easier for us to monitor questions that way. 
And then I would also recommend um, using the Q&A function instead of the chat um, for the same reasons. All right. And then with, uh, I don't have anything else. So if everyone else is ready, we can get going with the first part of our panel. Okay. Um, I'll begin sharing my screen then with the presentation. Oh, wait, no. Sorry. Okay. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon for the Meet the Peer Advisors. Um, how this will work is for the first um, few minutes to peer advisors for your 2020 2021 academic year um, we'll go ahead and introduce themselves and then until 2 30 we'll have a q a with the peers and students um, that will also go into maybe four o'clock um, uh, after the staff have also introduced themselves and then we'll have the opportunity for students to ask question, more questions then as well um, so first is me. Um, my name is Ajari Falcon. I am a senior and I'm, I'm a manager of economics and political science double major. Um, I'm from the East Bay, so from Canole. Um, I don't know if all of you guys are maybe familiar with that area. Um, I chose managerial economics as my major because it became really interesting to me to see how economic policy and political decisions overlap and how important they are to the outcomes of our economy and politics. Um, as a man econ major um, and peer advisor, I've heard a lot of feedback regarding classes, but personally, ARE 115A economic development is my favorite. Um, I really enjoy learning um, how the developing countries um, have to um, deal with their credit markets and their financial decisions and things like that. It became, it became really interesting to me and I really liked that class. I took it in spring 2020. And then a real quick thing to know about me is that during quarantine, I tried to explore my skills in the kitchen, but I found out that I'm not too much good of a cooker, but I'm a very good baker. So, yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Parvin Shang and I am a fourth year double majoring in managerial economics and communication. So I chose to major in man econ because I thought that it was the perfect mix of both economics and business administration back when I was a senior in high school. And because of my strong interest in the business world, I think that organizational management, ARE 112, has to be my favorite class so far. And lastly, a fun fact about me is that although I've always, always hated running, I actually picked up running as a hobby during this quarantine. So it's time to try something new. Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany Zhao. Um, I'm also a fourth year man econ major and I'm also minoring in accounting and education. So I majored in managerial economics because I like that the major applies economic theory to real world applications. So I can have a full sense of how business and policy de decisions are made. And I would have to say that my favorite class so far is ARE 107, which is econometrics for business decisions, just because I really like using R to analyze data. And a fun fact about me is that I like to collect things, and right now I'm collecting a lot of pins. Hi guys, uh, my name is Eva Chung, and um, I'm a third year manager economics major, minoring in accounting and technology management. Um, and I'm also from San Francisco. Um, so I chose the manager economics major because it was a perfect major for me to explore what field of business I wanted to pursue. Uh, my favorite class so far has been ARE 100B, which is intermediate uh, microeconomics. Um, I really enjoyed this class because um, I enjoyed ECM 1A and ARE 100A, which are both microeconomic classes. So it gave me a strong foundation for ARE 100B. Um, a fun fact about me is that I really enjoy biking, um, which was one of the things I really value about the Davis campus. And recently, I've been biking a lot along Great Highway and Ocean Beach in San Francisco. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Tran, and I'm currently a junior. Um, I'm majoring in managerial economics and minoring in accounting, and I'm from San Jose. Um, I decided to choose to major in managerial economics because 
I liked how its classes allowed me to explore um, a lot of career paths from finance and accounting to um, economic policy and business regulation. And uh, because of my uh, interest in accounting, I would have to say that my favorite upper division class would be ARE 118, which is tax accounting. And a fun fact about me is that um, I picked up latte art as a hobby during quarantine, and my favorite latte is currently matcha latte. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas, Thomas Cox. I'm from Eagle Point, Oregon. I'd be pretty surprised if uh, any of you actually know where that is. It's like the Medford area. Um, I'm also a Man Econ major, surprise, surprise, and technological technology management minor. I chose Manicon because it's largely exploratory and not knowing what I wanted to do coming into Davis. It was a great opportunity for me to try out different fields and, uh, and just try different embassies and really figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, like Ijari, I really enjoyed ARE 115A, uh, development economics because of the different perspectives it taught and just learning how economics operated on a global scale was really interesting. Uh, my, I didn't know we were doing fun facts, but uh, I somehow convinced these lovely people to hire me by telling them that I had really big feet. So like, neato, I guess. Okay, um, thank you to all of our peers for going ahead and introducing themselves. Um, we can't wait to work with all of you students um, during the 2020-2021 academic year. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and um, first I want to welcome everybody to follow us on social media. Um, our Facebook page, our UC Davis um, Instagram page, and then our LinkedIn. Um, the peer advisors do run these accounts, at least the social media accounts. So any quick questions, you can always ask us there via direct message and we'll um, get back to you within a day or maybe um, if it's like within our work hours, um, then within our work hours as well. And then as always, we post all of our um, class offerings and things like that on our website. So feel free to visit our website as well. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and do a Q&A um, with all of you students. So I'll stop sharing my screen for now. It seems like there's already a couple of questions in the chat bar, if you'd like to answer those as well. Yeah, um, so we can go. Okay, so a student asks that um, all of our peer appointments are full now. Um, so if the peer appointments are full, maybe for this week, maybe you can check it out um, next week, um, our schedules and things like that. Um, they do vary from week to week, so there might be a cancellation, but you can always um, book. But yeah, so just um, you're going to have to go week by week on having to um, uh, book an appointment. But yeah. And also, if you're having trouble booking an appointment for wh whatever reason, you can always email our um, our Man Econ email, which I am putting in the chat, and an advisor or our assistant can assist you. Um, and real quickly, before we continue on with the questions, I just wanted to introduce the rest of our advising staff. So those are the peer advisors. We also have uh, five staff advisors. So there's myself, Jemmy. Um, I'm a staff advisor for Man Econ. I'll go next. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm also a staff advisor for Man Econ. Um, I've been in the office for about 21 years. I'm from Paradise, California. Um, and I love dogs a lot. I have a German Shepherd and a little pity mix at home, and um, I love dark chocolate. That's me. Thanks. Hi, my name is uh, Chris Guevara. I've uh, been an advisor with Man Econ for, I think it's two and a half, or it's, yeah, two years now. Um, originally from Los Angeles, and a fun fact about me is 
because I'm from Los Angeles, I'm a big Lakers fan. So obviously I'm a happy camper as everybody shakes their head. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can go next. My name is Maria Saldana Seibert. I'm uh, also a staff academic advisor. Um, I've been in the department almost two years, but I've been on campus for almost 25 years uh, and a UC Davis alumni. Uh, so uh, fun fact about me, love coffee and I can have it uh, at any time of the day and it always um, hot coffee. Um, and a plug, I guess, from the LA side of things, um, uh, LA Dodgers, I would say. <laughs> Hi, I'll go last here. Um, my name is Dee Shannon, and I've been with the department for over eight years. Uh, but I am technically retired, but I call it semi-retired because uh, I enjoy coming back and working with students um, on a part-time basis. And I just moved to Chico, California to um, be closer to my uh, grandchildren. I've got a grandson and a baby granddaughter. So uh, we're having a good time up here and even in spite of the smoke, but I'm happy to be with all of you virtually. It's great to see everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, and I guess I didn't give that much about me, but uh, I've been an advisor for four years. Yeah, it was four years in September. And I'm from Oakland slash Stockton. I am a UC Davis alumni and yeah, I'm excited to start this new year. All right, so in terms of accessing these recordings afterward, uh, we will try to post them to our website. Um, so they should be available within like the you know next week or so, whenever Chris can get to it. Um, so yeah. And then our next question we have here is, uh, can we go over the specializations in man econ? Um, yeah, can we go over the specializations in man econ? And what they necessarily lead to, I'm guessing job wise. Anyone like to start? Yeah, so I can go over the business econ um, emphasis if that's what they are referring to in terms of specialization. Um, so there's four. Um, there's business econ, international business, um, there's environmental and resource economics, and then there's agri business economics. Um, the business econom the business economics emphasis um, more so has accounting courses. Um, it also has like marketing classes in it as well. So a lot of students and finance, of course, and investment classes too. So a lot of students interested in going maybe into the finance um, field or also maybe um, the marketing or are really interested in accounting too, um, really do um, lean towards that emphasis. Um, the emphasis is very versatile in terms of that. It has a lot of options um, for upper divisions that you can take as a student. Um, follow us on Instagram or on Facebook, we were having like this little sequence called about the major Monday where every Monday we explained um, all four of our emphasis um, into better detail too, if you want to look in there as well. But that's the business econ emphasis. I don't know if anybody wants to explain the international business um, emphasis. Yeah, so I'm doing a double emphasis in both um, business and uh, business economics and international business. So I would say that, yeah, um, agree with Ajari that business emphasis is very broad and the international business has a lot to do with economic development, trade, um, different uh, policies and um, uh, more geared towards obviously economics and um, some macro classes.
And then we also have two other emphases which um, aren't as popular as the business economics and international business um, economics, but they are still options. There's the environmental and resource economics uh, emphasis, which focuses on uh, the use of natural resources and how that impacts economic policy. And then the agribusiness emphasis, which is all about the ag industry. So you learn about ag markets, um, ag markets, ag policy. So um, yeah, it, it's very, the major is very broad. So you'll more than likely find what you're interested um, within the major. And uh, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, it's just easier for us to keep track of who's asking what. All right. Okay, so then. So this one, this next question. Oh, Thomas, do you wanna go ahead and answer that one? Uh, sure, that's so asking about specific classes that we can that we would recommend taking in a quarter would definitely be something that we would be happy to go over in an actual appointment more, uh, especially if it's just a general question. Do you recommend this class with that other one? Uh, as far as a general rule goes, we only more often than not will only say you might want to reconsider doing this if you're thinking about taking more than two of the upper division uh, classes required within the major at the same time. But again, if as more appointments become available in the coming weeks, we'd be more than happy to answer those questions uh, in an appointment itself. All right, so this next question is more geared towards transfer students. Um, do, you all, do you all have any tips you would like to uh, give an incoming transfer student who has already taken the lower division classes? Yeah, so for um, transfer students, I would recommend taking ARE 100A and STATS 103 as soon as possible because those two classes are usually prerequisites for a lot of our other classes. And also, even though you've already taken the lower division requirements, it's best to check in again, um, just because we do have our own um, computer class requirements that might not transfer over and communication requirements. So make sure you're double checking that you all of the classes you took at um, your CC has transferred over with our major. Any other tips for transfer students? Uh, check out the Transfer and Reentry Center. They have a website at trc.ucdavis.edu and they have different events and sort of drop in hours, maybe by appointment because of COVID, uh, just to check in and, and talk to other transfers going through the same experience. Um, in terms of classes, another um, option you get uh, transfer students might have as well, um, just because at times like that Getty doesn't come over all the way, um, or you might have some troubles with prerequisites, um, you can um, consider maybe ARE 112, um, which is the organizational management class, um, or ARE, um, I believe 115A, I'm not, I don't remember all of the prerequisites off the top of my head, um, which doesn't have a lot of prerequisites either. Um, so in terms of upper divisions, I would just look for um, classes that don't have um, a lot of prerequisites or that at least are the ones that you satisfy. Um, like for example, ARE 112 or 115A, um, which seem to be more common for at least first quarter transfers. All right, so on to the next question. Uh, to all of our man econ majors, so the peers, what academic resources do you turn to and what habits do you practice to help you perform well each quarter? The resources I rely on the most uh, are honestly just office hours talking to the professors, talking to the TAs, uh, especially on a class by class basis. Uh, they understand that you're, you're a student, but you also have other things happening in your life. So just talking to them, 
and helping and asking for help goes a really long way. Uh, I, and there's tons of other use resources you can use. I don't know if other people have specifics that they like to use, but office hours are the, the main thing for me. Um, I, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, uh, at least for studying, I like join, doing a lot of study groups. And especially now, since everything's online, a lot of people like do like Facebook groups or um, other social media options for to do like study groups to study together and work on homework together. And um, another good resource are advisors. So um, it's pretty good to like go check Oh, are your um, d degree requirements for uh, the man econ major being done, you know, just to make sure you stay on track and are taking like the right classes. Yeah, as the first year too, um, I went a lot to the calculus room, um, at least for math help. Um, I'm sure they probably have online Zoom drop-ins too. But yeah, I definitely um, thought they were very helpful, at least for math, the math series. Um, Would anyone else like to share their habits and practices? Um, so like for me, um, on top of going to office hours and doing study groups, um, as previous um, mentioned, I also like having a planner and um, I have a calendar where like I have um, all the due dates so that I don't miss anything. Um, I have a planner where like I write down everything um, that I need to know for the rest of the week and beyond. And I think that's um, been really helpful for me. And Another thing also, about habits. Oh, sorry, Parvin, go ahead. Sorry. Um, to also add, um, I think for our core classes is really important to understand the bigger picture and how everything ties together. Because when you get into like um, the specifics of each market, it can be kind of confusing and everything starts to feel like it's the same thing. Um, so just staying on top of it and really understanding the material so that when you have back-to-back -back midterms or anything uh, with a crazy schedule in the quarter system, you will feel less um, worried that you're cramming in the last minute. And another thing about habits uh, for me as well, it's really important to just take care of yourself. If you feel pressured or stressed at times, don't be afraid to, to break up. Uh, like if you're doing six hours of studying a night, don't be afraid to take a night off if you need to. And especially something that I see tons of, of students do, my friends, my, my different peers, is they'll like pull an all-nighter the night before an exam. Don't do all-nighters all-nighters suck, they make you feel bad, and when you're actually sitting there and you're in your test and you're feeling really tired, uh, it's probably because you're not sleeping or drinking water. So try and like plan things out accordingly so you're not cramming and, and doing that kind of stuff before so that way you don't face that. All right, so we're going to interrupt the Q&A for a quick second to introduce uh, the last member of our panel, Cindy. Hey, hi everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, my name is Cindy. I'm the assistant to everyone and all students as well. Um, if you have trouble making an appointment, um, you can just um, check with me um, through the email or um, I think there was a link that was sent out to, oh, it's on the website. There's a link that's like a, we have a drop-in chat um, that I run from 11 to 3 and then 3.30 to 5.30. So it's general questions. I can't answer anything you know, too in depth, um, but I can help with some things. And then I can also schedule you appointments with peers and staff advisors. Um, yeah, so that's me. Fun fact about myself. I usually have a candy dish on my desk, so this is not possible. So when your appointment, imagine your favorite candy and that's pretty much all I can give you. So, <laughs> But I hope everybody has a great year in spite of it all and we're this is such a great team to help everyone and i'm excited to be um part of this great team for just to help everybody be successful and figure out what's going on 
Okay, take care, everyone. Nice to meet you. All right, thank you, Cindy. Okay, so continuing on with the Q&A, the next question is, can you talk about internship experience and opportunities? Yeah, so I was an RA for a couple of years uh, in the dorms, so I worked really closely with two of the resources we have on campus, the ICC, so the Inter Internship and Career Center, as well as the CSI, which is Student uh, Center for Student Involvement, that's the one. Um, and those are two really great places. The ICC is a, a great place that's uh, throughout campus, connects you to internship opportunities, both on campus, off campus, research-based, non-research-based. Uh, and then the CSI is great for finding clubs or student organizations that you'd be interested in exploring an interest even further. And then I also personally did an internship through uh, UC Davis Study Abroad, where I spent a summer in Tokyo doing uh, some in administration work that was actually for credit through the major as well. So if you're looking and you're able to potentially do a international study for a summer or a, a quarter once you know, COVID restrictions lift, um, that would be my personal recommendation because I had such a great time and had eight units of, of work that went towards my degree as well. Um, there's also a website called Handshake, and you can just log in with like your UC Davis uh, email, and there's a lot of like job opportunities that's listed on that website as well. And also, um, our major uh, email, we send out a lot of different opportunities and career fairs within that email, so you can check it and see um, different things that you're interested in. All right, um, our next question is, what classes do you recommend uh, for data analytics? And I can actually answer this. So um, most of our core classes, uh, they would technically fit under that category. Um, and then we also have classes like ARE 107, which I think Tiffany mentioned beforehand and um, ARE 157, Analysis for Operations and Production Management. So um, Tiffany, actually, do you mind talking a little bit more about ARE 107? Yeah, so ARE 107 is kind of like a continuation of one of our core classes, ARE 106, which is um, econometrics. So ARE 107 goes more in depth about um, econometrics and how that applies to um, real world applications like business and financing decisions. And um, a lot of classes, some classes use different computer um, programs, but both of the classes that I took used R um, and we run regressions um, to analyze big sets of data and come to like an idea of economic interpretations of um, these different data sets. All right, thank you. Okay, so this question is more for the first year students. So any suggestions for the type of classes to take during your first year? Any specific classes you may recommend to take as a freshman? Um, if you are looking to like do this major and you're very solid on that, um, I definitely recommend taking a math course um, just because it is like a prerequisite um, for our major and it's um, a series. If you take the 16 series, it's A, B, and C. Um, so if you take if you take A, for example, in the fall, you'll be done with the math series um, by the spring, which that means then you'll be able to um, then just enroll in other classes that require math as the prereq and you won't have to worry about 
um, math, the requirement later um, during your college years. Um, personally, I liked psychology one um, during my first year. I thought it was very interesting. Um, and then I took that and then I also took political science, American politics. I also really liked that class. Um, it made me want to become a political science um, double major. So definitely do try and explore um, with your lower div GEs. That way you can maybe, um, you maybe find yourself leaning towards another major or another minor. Yeah, and in, in my first year as well, I uh, was still finding out what I wanted to do. So I didn't actually take any sort of Manicon related classes my first year. Uh, and I took a wide spectrum of, of classes. I took intro to Islamic literature. I took fairy tales, uh, as well as um, I, tr I tried getting into an ECS class and that one didn't work out too well for me. But it's, it's really, especially in your first year, it's a great time to just try a, a wide variety of, of different um, classes. Anything that might remotely interest you, definitely don't hesitate to try. And also on our Man Econ page, um, there is a sample uh, schedule, like a four-year plan. So you can also check that out and see um, what our major recommends that you should be taking. All right. Uh, did any of you get into research? I'll let Davis. Nope. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, typically our students, um, a lot of our students don't do research, but there are some who do. Um, if you attended the faculty panel earlier today, you heard uh, one of our professors, uh, Kristen Kiesel, talk about the um, Man Econ Honors Thesis. So with that, you do get to do research. Um, but outside of that, I, if you are interested in research, um, most of our faculty are conducting uh, research. So I would recommend um, asking your professors, your ARE professors, about what they're doing and see if that's of any interest to you. And adding on to that, a lot of my friends have actually gotten research opportunities through economic um, development, ARE 115A. So I know that um, ARE, the 115 series, they recruit a lot of research assistants if that's what you're interested in. Okay, so we have a question here. Um, so this is about GE. Um, so I would just like to say that uh, man, econ, peer advisors, and staff advisors, we don't actually advise on GEs. I recommend that you talk to the peer advisors and staff advisors in the college of the college that we're located in, the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. Um, but I will say that most of our coursework does cover the science and engineering and social sciences sections of GEs but that is the extent of our advising on that. So, yeah. All right, so this question, uh, what made you choose to be a peer advisor? I wanted to be a peer advisor because after a year of searching, it ultimately was the help of a couple of different peer advisors that led me to do Manicon. So I, I really had enjoyed it since then. And I, I thought it was a great opportunity to provide a similar experience to other students. Um, I really enjoyed learning from students. So learning um, what they really liked in classes, maybe what they didn't like about certain classes and also being able to share that with other students who come in as well. Um, I think just being able to just absorb um, everybody's like personal experiences and classes is very helpful in like me choosing my classes and helping students choose their classes as well. And then I think it was also um, just being able to help, you know, um, just it's like a community almost. So you're helping um, students and they, these students like come very frequently. So you begin to just like 
um, build like a relationship with them, um, like as an advisor and sometimes like as a peer too, like as a friend. And you see them in classes, which is really cool. Um, the reason why I wanted to be a peer advisor is similar to Thomas. I originally came into Davis not being a man econ major and going to different peer advisors and speaking especially to a man econ peer advisor that was more um, helpful and I understood like you know the different requirements I wanted to um, give a similar experience to people that also came to me. Um, for me, I really enjoy being around other Manicon students. Um, not only um, do we give our um, advice and advising to students, um, we learn a lot from these students. Um, we get to share our experiences, and that's really nice just to share experiences with um, the students, and they get to share theirs with, our, with us. Um, I feel like it's beneficial. It's not just beneficial to the student, but it's also beneficial to us as peers, and um, like it was mentioned, it's, we're all a community and we get to learn from each other. And um, for me, when I was uh, deciding to change my major, peer advisors and uh, staff advisors helped me a lot. So it was like something that I wanted to do as well and like give back to other students who might also be considering changing their major or considering a major in managerial economics. And I also didn't have a lot of friends in the major, so um, it's also a nice way to meet uh, other students in the major as well. Yeah, so I'd say that I think in general, we all have a similar theme of like just paying it forward. I also had a great experience with a past peer, so I wanted to kind of fill in her shoes when she, after she graduated. Okay, so I think this was mentioned before, but we do have a question about how you get into a study group or classes. So, how do you all form study groups? Especially with uh, COVID right now and everything being online, more often than not, it'll be like a week, maybe a weekend where you'll just see it, something on, the, on the, the Canvas link discussion boards like, hey, I made a Google Drive or hey, I made a group chat if people want to talk. And then for almost every single class I've had since learning has been online, there's been a study group kind of discussion. And then usually there's like um, a group page on Facebook where most students in the same like year graduating in the same year would like say oh who's taking these classes let's start a study group so definitely check out facebook and the canvas discussion page we have a question here um so i know we went into clubs in the last meeting so yeah we had a club panel earlier this morning but um, are any of you participating in certain clubs? If so, what would you recommend? Um, I'm not myself in any clubs, but I have several friends who really enjoy EBSA. So Economic Business Student Association, I think. And I have a few more that are also in Davis Accounting Society that um, really enjoy just doing that. So there, there are others. I don't actually have more answers myself, though. Um, I personally was in the Davis Accounting Society, and I thought it was really helpful with the recruitment process to get an internship. Uh, they also have a lot of guest speakers from firms, so you can definitely do connections that way. And they also hold like um, career fairs a lot. so. Uh, I think if you're interested in accounting, it's definitely a helpful, helpful resource to secure yourself an internship. I was also in EBSA and I was also in SN Leadership. I was actually president last year and um, we are a business and leadership organization for Asian American students, but you don't have to be Asian to join, obviously. And I think 
we have a lot of different clubs. I'm assuming that you're asking specifically for our major related um, organizations. So you can actually go on to, um, we have a website for that. Uh, does anyone know the Aggie Life website? Sorry, I'm blanking out. Uh, um, I don't know which website you're talking about, but there is, like, like I mentioned before, the Center for Student Involvement, CSI. Yeah. They have a great tool called the Involvement Calculator, I think. Basically, you just put in keywords that you might be interested in. So if you put in economics, there'll be more major or career focused uh, student organizations. And there's also hobby related uh, clubs as well. So a fairly popular one is like the Nintendo Club that just plays video games a lot. So uh, there's, there's, I think there's like 800 clubs and student or organizations on campus. So quite literally, there's probably something for everyone. For any of yeah, you so in you can, a, oh, sorry, go on. So you can check out the full list of everything we offer. And also we have an involvement fair coming up, I believe. So you can also um, talk to each club and see who you kind of vibe with. Are any of you in a club that's not related to the major? So I was also in Popping Club, which is a dance club. And I think Eva was also in Agape, right? Yeah, and, and um, I've been in Agape since my fall court freshman year, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm also in Sack Hacks. It's similar to like Hack Davis, and um, um, basically they plan um, a hackathon event for student to, students to attend. All right, so our next question, what many econ courses did you find the most difficult? Um, in particular, ARE 106 is notorious for being, in many people's eyes, the most difficult. I know Tiffany said that she really enjoyed it earlier teach their own. Uh, I was as sick as a dog during the quarter I took it, so I really didn't have a great time. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my answer. Um, for me, it was also ARE 106 because um, I'm not the best at statistics and the class uses a lot of statistics as well as like, um, you have to do use R as well and it was kind of hard to like get used to the program. So uh, yeah, for me personally, ARE 106. Um, for me, not necessarily most difficult, but it was a little bit challenging um, in terms of like, there was a lot of content in the class was ARE 115A, so economic development. I did say I really enjoyed that class, um, but there was just a lot of content to go over. So just being able to manage all that stuff and being, to, and being able to review all of that too prior to midterms and um, final exams was just um, it required a lot of my time. So it was a class that I very that I enjoyed a lot. It gave me a lot to learn from, but it did require a lot of my time as well. So, yeah. What about lower division uh, requirements? The hardest lower division requirement? Uh, if you choose to go so there's options with the, the calculus series you would need to complete for the major. So 16A is what's typically recommended for our, our major. 17, the 17 series is more of a biological sciences emphasis math and calculus course. And then the 21 series, 21A and B is needed for the major. And 21B had a lot of physics in it and I was not prepared. So I, I yeah, I would, I'd, be, I'd be careful about 21B if you're considering taking that path. I also had a hard time with 21B. And I think um, in terms of like our major lower division, ARE 18 was a lot of 
um, material for me just because it was business laws and a lot of memorization. And for upper division, um, it would be ECM 101, which is intermediate macroeconomics. I realized that I'm not a macro person and it's ironic because taking AP macro in high school is the whole reason why I chose this major, so. Right, <clears throat> so how has the workload been? Have you been able, wait, sorry. Have you had plenty of time for um, extracurriculars, even with minors? So I think this question is really just gonna depend person to person. Everyone's gonna have different stuff going on outside of academia, work, my any sort of interests um but i've really enjoyed being a man econ major even with my minors simply because there's been a lot of flexibility part of it being it's it's two-sided right because it's a really popular major so there are sections of classes and a large number of classes provided at different times so i can kind of build the schedule that way I, the way i wanted um but at the same time if you're a bit behind on the past time then uh, a lot of them will be full. So two sides to it, but I, I really enjoyed it. And so it, even this quarter, I'm, I'm having hours as a peer advisor. I have my last minor class. I have three major classes and I have another job I do three times a week. So the flexibility is a, is a huge thing in the major. And again, a question like that, it's just going to be dependent on every person. Um, I do have time like for things outside of school. Like I do get to hang out with my friends on the weekends um, and I am a double major. So um, the, the units are more than a minor, right? So they, it's assumed that you have to put in more time um, just because it's, it is a double major. Um, but I think you do find time for other things. It's just setting up your schedule and making sure um, you're managing your time appropriately. Um, so just like I found it really useful to just have an agenda or like make a day to day schedule because sometimes I can't commit to very long term things. So just doing something by day um, helps me a lot, helps me time manage and allows me to do stuff that I want to do on the weekends, whether that be with my friends um, or with a club or something like that. But yeah. Yeah, and also I think my biggest tip would be um, planning ahead. So as a another double major here, I knew that I wanted to double major my second quarter in Davis freshman year. And what helped me the most was kind of looking at my four year plan early on. So I knew how many units I needed per quarter in order to finish both majors and graduate on time. And I think when you see the whole picture, it does help to realize um, how much wiggle room you have and time for other things. How about the rest of you? How have you been uh, able to handle extracurriculars? Um, and do you find that difficult, um, even if you have an extra minor or double major? Um, so I agree with planning ahead for sure. I think it's all about time management. Um, so I'm majoring in major economics, but I'm also pursuing two minors. Um, and on top of that, like I'm on a dance team and sometimes we have practice late at night um, each week and um that's usually my time to like study um so i believe like it's all about like time management and being able to prioritize your time um setting goals um that you have for the day for the week um i think that's really important and also i wanted to add that majority of the clubs here actually do meet at night so if you're worried about like it clashing with classes uh, I'd say it might only clash with like a discussion section, but other than that, you should be able to um, have your evening free for clubs. Yeah, and for me, I, uh, uh, I wanted to finish um, and graduate in three years. So, so my 
uh, quarters have been a little more heavier, but um, even with that and pursuing a minor, I definitely had time to like check out clubs and, you know, uh, do volunteering events and things like that. So I think the workload would be manageable for you to like explore other extracurriculars as well if you manage your time well. All right. How did you set yourselves up for future opportunities while at UC Davis outside of the classroom? So I'd say that um, two things are very important. Uh, first thing is obviously your network. Uh, as business majors, networking is very important and I think it never hurts to reach out to an alumni, especially at the companies that you want to work for. And also, um, internships are very important. A lot of my friends have already gotten their full-time offer just from being an intern. So um, the summer after your junior year, that's the usually the internship where it counts. Yeah, and also outside of, of internships, don't be afraid to just try any sort of position that um, interests you. So again, I was an RA for two years, so no longer, but regardless of the position, highlighting transferable skills and being able to, to put those on a resume and really talk about how the experience will help you, uh, it's it's huge and you can find those kind of skills in any sort of position so don't be afraid if you're if you're even just doing a like i don't know like a, a retail job or anything if if it's something that you're interested in and something that you're doing there's going to be a way to prove that it was beneficial to you later on yeah and piggybacking on what parvin said about networking like not only are you reaching out to like different um, business opportunities but also your own classmates and your professors especially if you're looking into grad school they will be the ones that will be giving you recommendations and they are also the ones that are aware of any possible um, opportunities for you Okay. Once you choose an emphasis, such as business economics, um, are there any classes to take that focuses more on marketing? Yeah, so we have um, ARE 136 managerial marketing. And we also have a list of classes that we divided by uh, the field, like the business field. I think it's on our website if anyone can link that. But um, yeah, we do have classes that focus more on marketing and yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be responding to whoever asked that question just with the course description page from the website where you can look up every class within the major and find what each one is about. Um, I have the list of different like grouped classes somewhere else that I can try and find. Uh, but also personally, I really enjoyed uh, Management 140, which is a minor class. Uh, also take technology management is a pretty common minor to have on top of being a man econ major. And that was really great. It was advertising, marketing, and the, the entire class was built around you and a group analyzing and deducing how to improve a local business's marketing strategy. So very hands-on and really just a great experience. Yeah, so Maria has linked the course description page in the chat. So please go ahead and check that out. Um, and that should give you a pretty good idea of where most of our classes fall. All right, so next question. What are your future plans after college?
not sure yet um but in in that itself don't be afraid like if if you're towards the end of your collegiate career don't be afraid to not know either again just just try anything that might interest you along the way towards the end um and you could be pleasantly surprised like that second job i have right now i thought i was just gonna be working in the summer and now it turns out they might be able to pay for my mba which would be massive so uh yeah anything anything that interests you at all make the most of it and don't be afraid to try it um i personally plan on going into um, consulting management or marketing i'm not sure exactly what yet and also uh, pursuing an mba in uh, maybe like five years <laughs> Yeah, I plan to work for a few years as well. Um, and then maybe like, maybe in four years or something like that, I plan to go to law school um, and study um, and maybe like look, and I'm very interested in corporate law. Um, I'm planning on going into public accounting after I graduate. Um, like Parvin mentioned, it's really important for you to get an internship um, the summer after your junior year. Um, so recently I've been interviewing with a lot of firms um, and yeah. Um, for me, I'm also thinking of going to public accounting. So I have an internship uh, this summer. So I'm hoping that will lead to a full-time position. Um, for me, I'm kind of like Thomas, where I'm not completely sure what I'd like to do, especially with, with like taking so many different classes. I, I don't know how I still don't know what I want to do, but um, definitely like still going to a lot of career fairs and um, figuring it out. All right, so this next question, I guess would be more for Kelly. Uh, what do you think about a three year study plan? Um, I think it is definitely doable and manageable. I actually changed my major like halfway through my freshman year and I was still able to uh, make a plan to finish in three years and do a minor. So I think it's definitely um, important to, you know, meet up with a peer advisor and advisor to create that academic plan and then like plan ahead especially if you're also uh, thinking of pursuing a minor or something else. All right, um, have any of you failed an upper division class? If so, how did you deal with that and what would you do differently? So I guess the answer is no, but um, it is something that does happen. And so um, if you do find yourself in that situation, please, 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 please come into advising and we can talk through your options. Um, students fail classes for several different reasons. So each situation is unique. So it's important that you come in and talk to an advisor so that we can figure out a solution um, together that best suits your needs, all right? Okay, so this next question, um, we kind of briefly touched on this, but if you can go into more detail. So how do you recommend uh, connecting with fellow classmates and alum? Classmates, I assume you would have to take advantage of uh, times in the class, but how do you find alum? Alumni, yes. Yeah. So for alumni, I would recommend creating a LinkedIn and also um, going to guest speaker events. So a lot of times clubs and the um, career center, they would host different panel events that would actually bring Davis alum back. And that way you can really build a connection with them and get to know them. As for classmates, um, I personally usually make my friends in discussion rather than lecture. 
so. Can I add something to that in terms of how to make imprints in COVID times? I found out in my classes that sometimes the instructors will put you into small discussion sections or into groups, and that is a perfect way to kind of link in with other people within your class to start building those connections and networks just within your own class. And also orientation. So I don't know how uh, things are working out this year, but my best friend and roommate, I actually met her through orientation and she's also a main econ major. So it's really just a lot of the um, clubs or main econ events where you can meet each other. All right, so I don't, we don't have any psych and man econ double majors, but we do have a couple of double majors. So how, um, how has your experience been with double majoring in man econ and something else? Um, my double major is political science. So there's not a lot of overlap in classes. And again, you can only over, um, overlap two upper division classes um, for both majors. So it is just a lot of work. Um, you don't really have the flexibility to take um, as many GEs as you'd like, just because um, I want, like, I want to have like a manageable course load each quarter. Um, so I take like about like 16 units a quarter, um, which is like one unit more than like the regular minimum progress, which is about 15, but it's not too, too much. Um, I really enjoy the balance of political science classes and man econ classes. Um, because I get more so like reading um, in like the political science classes and then more so math and quantitative work in the main econ classes. So it's um, it's a good mix of both classes. So I enjoy it. And as for me, I actually wanted to double major in psych in the past. It's a, one of the majors that um, I ended up considering. Um, if you want to go into like consumer behavior, I think it would be a pretty good combination. And also keep in mind that psych has a BA and a BS. So just really look into the difference. I ended up choosing communication because I wanted to go into um, more like PR and marketing. And I think communication has really helped me build a strong foundation, especially in writing. So that's why I chose it. Yeah, and I would also add, um, we can only talk so much about other majors. We can give you all the information about Man Econ, but if you are interested in doing a double major, you should definitely talk to the peer advisors and staff advisors for psychology. And all of that contact information is on their website. So every major has a website and every website has their contact information. So that's the best way to get a hold of them. And also the best way to kind of know is really by taking their classes. So I personally took um, COM3 and COM10V before really deciding that that's what I want to do. And I also took Psych1 to kind of test out both. All right, so this question is more for the accounting peer advisors. Um, so to those minoring in accounting, does uh, that satisfy CPA requirements? Um, so the minor does not satisfy all the CPA requirements. Um, the CPA requires like a certain number of units in like different sections. So you would have to take a couple extra classes, maybe at a community college or consider like online classes um, as well to uh, satisfy those requirements. I know a lot of people also um, go to grad school after they graduate. So you could either like get a master's of professional accountancy at UC Davis as well, you know, just stay another year, or you could get like a master's of accounting in like some other college and, uh, you know, consider like an extra nine months of uh, grad school. Um, so depending on what classes you take in the Man Econ um, major, um, it will fulfill some of the CPA requirements. 
Um, on top of that, um, those who want to pursue accounting usually do the accounting minor at Davis. Um, even with the accounting minor, there's still certain classes that you will have to take outside of Davis, um, which is why some students um, pursue the grad program. Um, one class that you will need outside of Davis for sure is um, an ethics and accounting course. Um, usually students take that at um, a community college, um, usually like Foothill or any other community college that does offer it. All right, and then we have um, one last question here, is taking Econ 100A and Econ 100B a good option? So um, I wanted to discuss this because, um, well, first there are, there's man econ, managerial economics, and then there's economics. So managerial economics, that's what we are. And then economics is in the College of Letters and Science. So that means that we also have um, separate classes. So any class that you see that is labeled ECN, that stands for economics, and therefore it's for the economics major. Our classes are labeled ARE, -E, -E, and that stands for the department that we're in, agricultural and resource economics. Um, and so Econ, Econ 100A and Econ 100B, those are the part A and part B of the intermediate microeconomics for the economics department. So our major, uh, we want our students taking ARE 100A, not ECN. 100A, all right? Um, and the reason why we are labeled ARE, um, if Elizabeth, if you wanna give a little bit about the history of uh, why we are, why our classes are ARE. Mm, um, so ARE is Agricultural and Resource Economics. And um, it's a good question. I don't know that I have that down, Jemmy, about why, what the complete history is. Um, but I think it has to do with um, the land grants. Um, so um, in any regard, um, I can get that answer out to you later <laughs> when I research it a little bit more. Thanks for putting me on the spot. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. So, Agriculture and Resource Economics is uh, the name of our department and we're housed in the College of Ag. So it is different than the regular economics department. Okay, um, this next question, do jobs see a difference between man econ versus econ? Um, if I want to go for a job that's typically for econ majors, would I be discounted? I think that's a really good question. Um, there is a difference in that man econ is a lot more uh, focused on the application of economics and uh, companies will see that on your transcript, you are taking business related classes compared to if you were an econ major. Um, for a job that's typically for econ majors, I think it depends on what that is, but I'd say that um, it should be okay, unless they require like specific econ classes that aren't covered in our major. So it kind of depends. All right, so those are all of the questions that we had in the Q&A. Um, we will be here for another 45 minutes. Um, please let us know if, you know, if you have any other questions.
Oh, we do have a question here. Um, so if he studied abroad, what, study abroad, what countries? I'm assuming what country did you go to? Um, and then just generally uh, study abroad, it goes to many, many questions, uh, many countries. And so um, typically if you have a country in mind, you can always go to the Global Learning Hub website and they do group their, um, their study abroad opportunities by country. But um, yeah, do any of the peers want to elaborate on their experience abroad? Yeah, so I, again, I went through the study abroad uh, office, now the Global Learning Hub. And so there's tons of countries that you can go to, but there are four internship specific programs uh, because there are also academic related ones, but there are internship specific ones through that are connected to the Manicon major. And I believe as of now, there's, they're available in four countries. So Czechoslovakia, uh, Japan, which is the one I went on, uh, it's specifically in Tokyo, New Zealand, and somewhere else that I can't think of at the moment. Maybe Greece, don't know. Um, and it, it was honestly just great. So if you do it through that student uh, housing opportunity, student, not student housing, uh, student study abroad opportunity, and you do the uh, internship program specifically, uh, they actually connect you with an internship themselves. So obviously you have to fill out what your interests are, what your skills and experience are, submit a resume and everything, but they actually do the, the groundwork of matching you with a company and opportunity that matches your interests. And then from there, they also plan great field trips. So in Tokyo, we had one weekend that was New Japan, one weekend that was Old Japan. So Old Japan, we went to Kamakura, saw the Bronze Buddha, saw, uh, went to different shrines, went to the beach, uh, great experience there. And then like New Japan, we went to uh, round one that was a penthouse suite on this, this massive building, went to a Gundam cafe, saw the like 40 foot tall Gundam robot, went to a maid cafe, which was also lots of fun. Um, it, it, it really was just a, a fantastic trip and even though I had tons of fun and I went in the middle of festival season and so uh, had all those experiences, I also made work connections and, and just did work as a social media intern for a company and just had a great time that way. So definitely 100% recommend it if you can do it. And then a follow-up question, uh, during what year of college did you go? I went at the end of my sophomore year, so at the end of my second, but it, I know plenty of people that go at all times. People, typically people will have a first year at college actually on location and they'll stay, but anytime after that people can, can go. I know tons of people that were planning on going at their senior year uh, for a semester length period in the first half of their senior year. Totally fine as well. Uh, whatever time works for you is, the best time to go. You can also take um, classes abroad that count towards the major. Um, some class that we have abroad is ARE 112, which is global management. Um, you can take this in Edinburgh, um, United Kingdom. And then there's also STATS 103, um, which is statistics for business and, econom and economics, and that you can take in Poland. Um, so yeah, I don't, I've never been abroad, um, but there was a pr past advisor, two previous advisors who did ARE 112 abroad, um, and they really enjoyed it. They had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and you have to go through, of course, the staff advisors um, to make arrangements with your plan um, and make sure that you can do study abroad um, or that you're able to fit it into your schedule. And then you also have to go through um, the study abroad um, center. Um, the Global uh, Learning Hub. Yeah, the Global Learning Hub. Thanks, Jeremy, um, for um, help with that as well. But yeah, you can take classes um, towards this major abroad. Yes, um, please meet with a staff advisor. <laughs> Sorry, um, for, for me, I was planning on going last summer, so the summer of my sophomore year, to do a program abroad, but it got canceled. And there's also, besides 
it's the Global Learning Hub, um, a program called UCEAP, which is basically where you get to choose an institution in another country. And then you would just uh, look at their um, class schedule and like the course descriptions. And then you would like choose a couple classes that you're planning to take. And you can bring these classes to um, a staff advisor and have them approve like which one of these classes could be considered as a, like a, strict, a restricted elective for the major. Um, so like Kelly, uh, my program was canceled um, last summer as well. Um, not only um, can you take classes abroad, you could also intern abroad. So I was originally playing um, on inter um, interning in Japan. Um, so I really encourage students to study abroad. I wasn't, I'm not gonna be able to have that chance, um, but if I could go back, I would for sure study abroad. And I don't think I described it too well, but when you do the internship program through the Global Learning Hub, you actually have internship credit that can apply towards your graduation. So I wasn't, I wasn't taking a class like ARI 112 uh, or STATS 103, but I, I had the internship and have eight transferable upper division credits that will help me graduate. And when he says gradu graduation, he means the 180 units that you need in order to graduate. Yes, it won't satisfy anything within the major, but it is just eight added to the the total 180 I need. Um, so we have a question here that says, what are the benefits? We did kind of touch on that, but if you, any of you want to elaborate some more. Uh, just for me, it really was balancing enjoying my summer have it traveling and seeing more of the world and also spending some time developing a career so that in and of itself is you get to have these fantastic experiences that you quite literally can't have unless you go to the place and do them as well as just the mutual benefit of being able to develop yourself professionally so it's fantastic Also, in terms of what you do when you go abroad, it really just depends on the internship and, uh, and the class you're taking and where you go. Yeah, it, it all depends. There are, I have several friends who took UCEAP programs as well that were the actual courses themselves. So they had some, some of their structures were classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, eight hours a day. And then after that, it was, it was all free time. Some have more structured, structured um, field trips type of thing like mine. So it, it all depends on the program and the schedule you have within it. All right, if you study abroad, does that most likely mean that you won't graduate in four years? Not necessarily, but meet with a staff advisor to make sure that studying abroad is right for you. There's also a question in the chat about the technology management minor. So that's my minor as well. And again, it's pretty common within the Manicon major. Uh, essentially, you can find this on through the Graduate School of Management website because that is the uh, graduate school on campus that essentially operates the technolo technology management minor for undergraduates to take. And so essential requirements, there are six classes you can take, management, they're all operative, MGT blanks, like 140, 50, 60, 70, and 80, I think. And they are a wide variety of different fields. You, can, you need to take five of them to complete the minor, and you have six to choose from. So one, one's accounting, one is that marketing class I introduced earlier, one is finance, um, so stocks type of thing, I'm trying to think more. 160, 120 was a consulting type of class and I'm blanking on the other one. But yeah, it's, it's I believe Maria just linked it. No, Ijari just linked it in, in the chat and you can just find all the classes linked right there. Yeah, and we can also help you um, with those classes as well. Um, we can help you with the tech management minor and the accounting minor. We can help you with those. Um, if you can't get to the graduate school of management um, or the advisor for those minors there.
All right, any other questions? All right, is taking math, oh, sorry, is taking a math 16 series with stats 13 ideal? Would it be difficult to have two math classes in one quarter? And um, I will just say right now that we don't recommend doing calculus and stats together. It's um, usually ends up being a difficult pair for students. And so our job as advisors is to set you up for success. And one of our tips is to not do that com combination. Adding to what Jamie said, um, I can also say that for that particular class, we actually advise uh, statistics to be in your second year after you've completed the math so that it's closer to statistics 103 and then closer to ARE 106. So if you follow that plan, you'd be right on track. As a freshman, can I take Econ 1? I'm assuming you mean A or B. So um, we recommend starting the Econ, starting with Econ 1B, although it really doesn't matter, but we do recommend starting with Econ 1B in spring of your first year. And then taking Econ 1A either over the summer or um, during your fall quarter of your second year. And this is for the freshman coming in, obviously. And then also, um, we will try to find a place for um, this afternoon session as well as the morning session on our website. So these are being uh, recorded so that other students can access it afterward. So any other questions from our attendees?
All right. If I just if I just registered for econ today, should the class show up in Canvas tonight? I actually don't know how long it takes to show up in Canvas. Do any of the students know? Um, it should show up almost like maybe give it like a few hours, but it should show up almost the same day. Um, maybe check that it is populated in your Canvas. Um, sometimes um, your all of your courses are hidden, um, so make sure it is um, on your dashboard. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it because it's on Canvas, but yeah. Um, adding on to that, a lot of professors don't publish the course until um, first day of school, so tomorrow. Um, so if it's not showing up yet, don't worry, it's going to show up. All right. Uh, what were some challenging classes this major in this major? How did you handle them? Um, we did go over this a little bit earlier. Um, so I, when the recording is posted, I recommend going back through and looking through uh, and listening to their answers. But yeah, there were a variety of classes like ARE 106 and ARE 115A. Uh, we do have a question here. Oh yeah, going back to the last, uh, what I just said, uh, Maria, yeah, it'll be posted on our website, not via email. Okay. Uh, can I still transfer to Man Econ without taking Stats 13 for my first year? You cannot. Um, the classes to change your major, uh, to, to declare Man Econ is uh, whichever calculus series you decide to do Econ 1A, Econ 1B, and Stats 13. So if you can't get to Stats 13 until your sophomore year, which if you're following our sample plan, that will most likely be the case, um, that means that you're changing your major in your sophomore year, which is totally fine. All right. So we have another question here. How was your overall experience as a man econ major? My overall experience has been great. Thanks for asking. Um, no, it's it's really been it's been fun. I again I I started just as I started doing this because it was largely exploratory, and I had the opportunity to just take it slow, try a whole bunch of different fields uh, before I even chose my emphasis in the major itself. And I really haven't looked back. It's been nice to to have that flexibility in the classes I take, find out what works for me, what doesn't. And um, it's, it's really been fantastic. Um, I really enjoy all of the class offerings. So far I had, um, I've had some luck with like the classes I've chosen. I've really enjoyed all of them. Um, I think it's a very versatile major and then you also like at least the business economics emphasis you have a lot of classes to choose from um, that counts towards that emphasis that make progress towards the major um, so yeah my experience has been pretty good um, there are like your occasional challenges like academic challenges that you'll have to face but um, with like help from peer advisors staff advisors and school resources you should be able to um, make it through successfully Um, I've also had a very good experience with Man Econ. Um, I came to Davis originally thinking that I was going to do computational statistics, which is a lot of data analysis mixed with computer science. And I changed my major thinking I'd do something different, you know, but I fall back into econometrics and a lot of um, the computational side of things. But I like that Man Econ has the additional um, application to a lot of more real world examples and um, um, business and marketing decisions. 
for me, yeah, for me, I definitely enjoyed the major, um, and I don't regret my uh, decision to switch from my previous major to my current major. And I just like how the classes cover like a wide range of information, so you can like choose which classes interest you and like um, decide oh um, what your interests are and like what you might consider as a potential career path. So I definitely like what how people mentioned before how exploratory the major is. Um, on top of like learning um, or taking like different classes each quarter, um, you also learn a lot about different industries from your peers since Manny kind of such, um, there's so much variety, like there's people doing different, pursuing different fields and you can learn a lot about um, different fields just by talking to your peers in Manny Con. Um, I found that very beneficial um, because coming into college, um, I had the thought that I was going to choose accounting, but I also wanted to explore other fields. And because of Manny Con, I was able to do that. Um, I got to like talk to my peers and see um, what they were trying to pursue um, and learn more about um, other fields as well. Yeah, thank you all. Um, so we do have another question here. I'm going to paraphrase it a bit so it can be a little more general. But in your experience, do you, if you are picking up a class, like say, um, like on the first day uh, of school starting, like, are you going to miss a lot of information? Like in your experience, what, well, what has been your experience with the first day? So do professors cover a lot on the first day? Would you be okay if you switched in um, a few day, a few lectures in? Yeah, I would say the uh, the university just plan for switching into classes with the drop date being, uh, you know, after week four outlines pretty well the date in which you would be fine to transfer in, right? Like that's that's why it's designed. So in, in most cases, obviously, the earlier you transfer in, the better, but professors do a really great job, and especially with online learning, of understanding your situation and, and having the material there for you to catch up on. A lot of the times they're, they'll understand and, and, it, and it's on a professor to professor basis on whether or not they'll uh, drop assignments that you need to do. More often than not, it'll be required to all do the same, but it, they're, they're pretty good. So if, especially if you're transferring into a class in the next few days, don't worry too much about it. Um, some tips personally, um, I think if we were, so if we were in person, um, I would have gone to the lectures, even if I wasn't registered in the class yet, um, I would have just gone to see what it was like. Um, and maybe if they were in my interest, um, that's maybe what would have persuaded me into registering for the class. Um, now that we're online in terms of catching up, I believe most of the classes um, have posted recordings. So you really don't have an excuse to not be able to catch up. I think it's almost just being able to manage your time time right because they are being posted online at least like from the classes that I have a lot of them are being posted online um, so I think that's an advantage I guess um, you can have now that classes are online um, on how you can catch up with your work All right, so we have about 15-ish minutes left. So if you have any last minute question, now is literally the time to ask them. Is UWP business writing required for man econ? Yes, it is a major requirement. 
it's a really good class if you want to learn well if you have well you have to learn um, all about like professional writing and resume writing so it's not so much of a burden it's actually very helpful um it gives you more um it allows you to go more into depth into just like professional writing so memo writing email writing um just like looking at contracts maybe like briefly writing up like the cover page of a contract so it's really helpful uh how is everyone doing with online classes uh for me it's given me a lot of flexibility especially because the classes that i'm taking with um education and ARE usually falls on Tuesday, Thursdays. So I have a lot of back to back classes. Like this quarter, I have classes from like nine to 1030, then like 12 to six, you know, so getting between classes and rushing, like I don't have to rush to like go to the next class or like bike. So that's nice. Um, I think it puts your time management skills to the test, um, especially being able to create a planner or um, just being able to manage all of your due dates and things like that. Because I find that with online classes, you have more weekly quizzes and weekly problem sets um, than you would have um, in person during or during in person instruction. Yeah, I would definitely say uh, because of on online learning, my engagement has just fall fallen off the cliff. So it's, if anything, it's a great exercise in being able to keep yourself disciplined. So even if it's asynchronous, if you've already developed your schedule around the class time that you thought you would have, really try and keep yourself to it. Because uh, if you don't, it's really easy to just, to just miss one of the lectures a week, and then all of a sudden it's before the midterm and now you have three more lectures you need to go over about material you don't know. So it's it's been a, a like a, a trial period, sort of like keeping myself honest. Um, also with asynchronous lectures, um, you know, there's not a teacher in the classroom telling you, oh, this assignment will be due on this day. So definitely keep track of when assignments are due because it's possible to like miss a couple just because it completely blew over your mind. I personally really miss being on campus. I think, um, you know, going to career fair, involvement fairs, and a lot of our welcoming events um, online is different. And I kind of wish that my senior year wouldn't be online just because I miss like seeing my friends in between classes or um, going to the coho for a little break. But other than that, um, it's true that you do have a lot more time for yourself. And also I enjoy being at home, spending more time with family as well. So it's kind of, I'm, I'm having mixed feelings about online classes. All right, we have a question here. What do you think about going into hospitality, the hospitality field after graduating? Does the hospitality field mean like hotels? I, I think so, yeah. You can you can use the skills and material you learn in Man Econ to help with hotel management and start a franchise of of hotels and inns. I have I actually have family friends that do that, so it's not unheard of. Yeah, I mean if it suits you, that's great. Yeah. All right. Is it okay if I okay, so that went away. But yes, it is okay if you take ENL3 during your first year. Yeah, I think maybe that one came because of UWP 104A. So I think it's 
forget to clarify that UWP 104A um, should be taken either your junior or senior year um, because it is an open class for anybody really, not just restricted to this major. Um, you most likely will get into it later, so maybe in your senior year. Um, so don't get too worried if you don't get into the class in your junior year. Yeah, and just to elaborate a little bit on that, um, UWP 104A is an upper division class, whereas uh, ENL3 is a lower division class, and it's one of the classes that you can use as a prerequisite to UWP 104A. Um, so that's where that distinction is. And then also there are other prerequisites to UWP 104A that you can take instead of ENL3, so that's not the only option that you have. And, and similar with 104A, because it's such a universal class and so many different majors have it as a prerequisite to requirements, it could be pretty difficult to get into it in your first year, but it's if you're able to, then I'd personally recommend it, yeah. And that would be first year for transfer students because they are junior standing and therefore can get into it. Freshmen cannot get into it yet. No. Is it restricted above freshman standing? Yeah, so 90 units um, and above, you have to complete 90 units. So transfer students are usually okay because they're coming in with junior standing, but then uh, first years, first year freshmen, uh, they have to wait. For ENL3? Oh no, for UWP 104A. Oh, okay, yeah, I was, I was like, I don't, I didn't, I didn't think so. But yeah, I got it. Does my AP English score of four qualify for lower division ENL three? Uh, does that mean I don't have to take lower division English? So for anyone who scored a four or a five on um, AP English, it does give you credit for ENL three and UWP one. So you do not have to take those uh, classes. In fact, you cannot take those classes for credit. Um, so we have a question here about AP uh, 3 on AP uh, Calculus AB. A 3 on AP Calculus AB will give you units towards the 180 uh, units that you need to complete for graduation. Um, yeah, if one of my uh, fellow panelists can link the AP chart in the chat, I recommend looking through that to see what 
uh, certain scores on certain AP exams get you? And then, um, yes, uh, this, this is currently being recorded and it will be posted to our website later on. All right, so we've hit the we've about hit the five minute mark. So, do any of our peers or staff advisors have any last remarks to share with our attendees? Um, nothing. I nothing on my part. I think just best of luck during this new year. It's going to be different, um, but. I think with every like with the proper help um, by reaching out to UC Davis resources, um, everybody will be successful. Um, also, follow our social media pages, and um, we are on there. You can send us a direct message for very quick questions, and we will for sure help you um, and like answer your questions as soon as we can. Um, but yeah, and always we encourage you guys to visit peer advisors and staff advisors. Ijari, can you put the social media in the chat? For me, I'd say that um, it is your first quarter at Davis. So no matter where you're from, the quarter system is something that um, will take time to be adjusted to. So don't worry. And I'd say what helped me my first uh, year here was really building a uh, solid support group. So try your best to meet new people. And who knows, maybe you'll find your next best friend. Anyone else from peer or staff? I'd just like to welcome all of you again. I know a lot of people dropped out of the, the webinar, but um, welcome to you all and we're here to help you. So I, I can't reiterate that enough. Um, the peers have all said it, but we are here, here to help you schedule an appointment with us. We're happy to talk to you, send us an email. Um, we will get an answer off to you. Um, and um, don't, don't hesitate to come and talk to us about anything and be proactive. That was something else that came up also in the faculty panel and, and I heard it from our peer advisors today as well. Um, be proactive um, and if you're having any difficulties, be sure to let us know right away. It's the, um, if we know sooner rather than later that you're having some trouble, or difficulties and we're in a better position to, to help you, okay? And I hope you all have a wonderful year and go Ags. Yes, thank you to our panel, our peers. Thank you for sticking it out for two hours. Um, I hope all of our attendees were able to get something out of it. Um, and yeah, come and see us.
All right. Bye, everyone.